eight things to really look out for and i'm going to close out this part of this of the show with these i'm going to put this up here so you guys can look at it too it's probably going to be hard to see though because um, of the writing but it says know the eight before it's too late and these are eight signs of a narcissist that you need to be watching out for and if you are dealing with these types of things you really need to reevaluate the relationships in your life that could be bringing these to the table because healthy relationships do not have these things in them i'm here to tell you 100 percent i have been in the worst relationships both um intimately and with a family members and it does not have to be that way and you have every right in the world to stand up to both and rid your life of both without feeling bad for doing so because nobody deserves to be treated the ways that narcissists will treat people so the first one is intensity in lying over the top gestures insisting early marriage which was something that was consistently put on me at the beginning of my relationship sorry i just kicked my <laughs> at the beginning of my relationship um until i finally got to the point where i was like okay um and that is and bombarding with texts and emails that's also something that i have lived through and it's just a way to dominate you as a whole if they can consider if they can tie you down um, and claim that ownership that a marriage can provide some people and also just completely dominating your time through consistent interactions with them nonstop. You don't have time for anybody or anything else. Number two is jealousy, irrational behavior, refusal to let you speak to opposite sexes, demanding to know private details of your life. Also something I dealt with in my intimate relationship with a narcissist. Um, it was constant. If I talked to anybody that was the opposite sex of me and also um, even the same sex as me, I wasn't allowed to interact with men because if I did, it meant that I was trying to cheat or I was trying to get involved with them um, in a uh, um, way that I shouldn't have been as a married woman. But also any female friend I had they would try to dominate that friendship to the point where they would then start bombarding those female friends of mine to where those female friends wouldn't want to be my friend anymore because they were uncomfortable with what that person was doing and their constant interaction with them to try and develop a, a more serious relationship with those people than I had so they could then keep control of my relationships with other people through those people. And that was really difficult to have friends tell me I can't be your friend because this person makes me so uncomfortable and they don't seem to have boundaries or limitations with how they're willing to behave towards your friends. And so that was always really difficult to deal with. Um, three is control. Telling you how to dress and behave, showing up uninvited, checking your phone without permission. Now, control is something that was extremely dominating in both situations, both with my family member and with my um, intimate partner. Control is probably the most driving force of a narcissist because that's ultimately what they get off on. Control is a huge part of how they survive. And if they do not have control, then they don't have any, any standing with you. So they will try to control literally every aspect of your life you know, I went through not even being allowed to leave the house for years of my life. You know, knowing where you are at all times and making sure they keep that control over you is a really huge part of it. Getting to dictate where you go, the things that you're into, what you like, your friends, your job. You know, um, it, it's, it's a huge part of the role that they claim in your life. So control will always be probably the number one red flag for me and it's really crazy because my husband now when we were in a long distance relationship and i lived in oklahoma and he lived in texas for two years i would go out with male friends all the time after work if i didn't have my kids and i was alone and i was depressed and i didn't want to be at home and i was sad i'd go out with friends and it was such a surreal surreal feeling to be like hey i'm gonna go out with so and so I'll text you when I get home and not be texted the entire time being berated that I was a, a, 
I'll put it up here because I don't think you're allowed to say it out loud on here. Um, <laughs> and just being berated and, and cast down on and talked down to because you might have a, a, a friendship with somebody of the opposite sex. So it's really surreal once you get yourself into a healthy rela relationship and it really does show you all of the ways even more that you allowed yourself to be abused, at least for me. And control is always going to be like the number one red flag for me. And when we were in a long distance relationship, there was another gentleman who I was hanging out with as a friend, made very clear that I wanted to be friends. And um, it was a joke between us that we, that our other people couldn't understand how him and I could be friends. Um, and we would joke about it and it's like, geez, do people really not think people with, you know, the opposite things can't hang out together and it not be sexual. And he came into my work once when I wasn't there and he talked to a coworker of mine about how my husband now, who was my boyfriend at the time, how he doesn't understand how he's okay with me going out and hanging out with him one-on-one -on -one, and how he would never be okay with that. And she said, well, that's why she would never date you because she was already with somebody like that. And she doesn't want to be controlled like that. And she doesn't want to have a constant guilt trip put on her that if she's hanging out with a friend of the opposite sex, it must be because she can't control herself and she's sleeping with that person. Like she would never date you because of that reason. And when I heard that, I was like, geez, Louise, like that's crazy. Like I could never, I, I know for a fact, I would never get myself back into a relationship like that because that's not good for anybody. So control is a hundred percent one of those things. And hold on my computer's turning off and it's definitely one of the things you need to look out for red flag number one number four is isolation insisting you spend time with only them making you emotionally physically and financially dependent on them this was a huge thing for both um in both situations for me um family first above all which to an extent is very true but also my significant other was very highly demanding on um they're never being anybody else. And they will at times even put wedges between you and your own family, you and your friends. If you are with somebody that's putting wedges between the people who love and support you in positive ways, that's a problem. That's a huge problem. <laughs> so isolation was always a big one. Also for me, I spent a lot of time at home alone where they knew I was, where they knew I didn't have a car so I could never leave. And also, um, you know, I had a child with this person, so they knew that I also had a, a toddler who was, um, you know, at times before they could even walk. So they knew there wasn't anywhere for me to go with a child as well. So making sure they know where you are, isolating you, keeping them to themselves means they don't have to counteract anything anybody else might be putting in your head about them, um, you know, being crazy, <laughs> basically. Number five is criticism, calling you names, ridiculing your life, and trying to brainwash you, claiming they're the only one that cares. Now, I remember this was a huge thing um, in both situations. You know, the person in my family definitely always tries to put the stipulation of, I am the number one person that you can trust. So if you're not trusting what I'm saying, then you're clearly with somebody or involved in something that is dangerous for you because I know all, I see all, I be all, and I am the one who has the ultimate say in what you do. But also in my relationship, um, it was build, break, build, you know, for a while just within my pinup work, it was, this is amazing, you should do it, go after it, you're great at it. But then as soon as I got any traction, it was also used against me to claim that I was this thing again that I'm not allowed to say out loud on, <laughs> on YouTube. And you know, they do that a lot is, is they try to control how you feel about yourself through how they see you and make you think you are seen by other people. So criticism is a huge thing. Number six is sabotage, making you miss work or school, hiding your keys or your money, destroying your self-esteem. So I had this happen once, um, you know, in my family, I was told when I when I got a really good job offer, I was made to feel guilty for wanting to take that job offer. And I said, I can't provide better for me and my kids as a single mom if I don't pursue better things for me and my kids. But I was told, well, you know, you can't take this because it'll take too much time away from them. And I said, well, I, I can't be with them nonstop and also have a job that takes care of them. I have to have balance and I have to be able to do both. 
And I was told that I needed to figure out another way. And I was thinking, but this job is not going to wait until I figure out another way. Like I have to be able to take this job. It's a good opportunity. But also um, with my significant other, I was sabotaged in work when he would see me starting to succeed. I was told I had to quit that job. And I remember um, calling my boss, crying on the phone, absolutely ashamed and devastated that I couldn't come into my shift, but also um, I would no longer be coming into work. And I remember my boss going, Emily, you can't let him do this. What are you doing? And I was just so brainwashed by this person and so devoted because I thought that's what I was supposed to do as a good wife. And I was, I was raised to constantly work at, and I just, I was like, I'm sorry. And I hung up the phone. Um, and it was really, really difficult, but it was, a uh, I was getting too comfortable with being in the outside world and making friends and talking with people. And it, and it made that person nervous. The next thing is blame making you feel guilty and blaming you for their problems, making you responsible for their destructive behavior. This is a really big one that's always been um, in my intimate relationship, was constantly letting you know that it was your fault, that you're the reason why, that you need to do better, that they can't do what you need them to do because you just, you're, you're the problem. So until you figure it out, they're just going to have to continue to <laughs> treat you this way. So blame is always a really big one as well. And that really creates that that harbors the criticism so when you have the blame on top of the criticism non-stop i was constantly blamed for infidelity non-stop non-stop and it was because that other person was consistently um cheating non-stop so these types of things are also ways to hide their behavior by making it seem like that's one of their biggest fears so they're blaming you for it when really it's their behavior um and it's just projection because projection goes with narcissism like peanut butter and jelly you know what i mean the last thing is anger anger overreacting to issues having outbursts that can't control threatening to hurt you or kill you feeling afraid for your life now i dealt with a lot of angry outbursts i dealt with a lot of um situations like that i know with my family member one of the last situations that i dealt with with them um i had to go to court over and i was i did everything in my power to make sure that i did not have to be in a in a close space with them because i knew that they would physically attack me because i had witnessed them physically attack somebody else when they were treating them that same way in the past when i was younger um so I definitely think like that I fear I, I've had giant I've never feared for my life when it, in regards to my significant other that I dealt with. But with the family member, I still to this day constantly in the back of my head am waiting for the next thing for them to do to hurt me and hurt my children and hurt my family um, and hurt the life that I've created away from them. And what's I think the worst part about this is that when you're dealing with a narcissist who will go out of their way to harm you, it feels like there's nobody there to help you because I've tried to get protection orders based off of like actual threats of violence and kidnapping my children and things like that. And I am told that there's nothing I can do. But when people like that go and they lie about, well, they threatened me, they seem to be able to get that stuff immediately. Oops, <laughs> sorry. So that can be... Um, you know, really difficult things. If there is, if there is dangers to your um, safety, your well-being, and bodily harm, there is no reason to stay. It doesn't matter if they buy you flowers every single day. Um, you can you can buy them yourself, just like my <laughs> Cyrus said. So those are the eight things. That was way longer than I thought, um, but those are really important things, and I think that you need to focus on those things. And if you are seeing these things in relationships that you have. Um, my suggestion would be to get away from them. If you're looking for guidance in situations like this and you're looking for help in situations like this, I highly recommend reaching out to people who you feel comfortable in guiding you through situations like this, whether it be a um, professional in therapists or, or psychologists or programs that are there to help people out of um, abusive relationships and situations or somebody like me you know i 100 percent share the knowledge that i've gained 
through getting through situations like this. So if you need somebody to talk to and you need somebody to listen to you and maybe try to help you figure things out, make sure to um, reach out to me because I 100% am always here.